Welcome to the Hooniverse Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Glucker. Uh, tonight, I am running solo. Co-host Ron Baugh is on a boat. He thought he'd be back by now, and he is not. So rather than not have one for this week, I'm going to record this one by myself. By myself. I'm still having a beer, though. So, ka Oh, I didn't mean to spray the juice everywhere. So, tonight looking at my outline of notes and i would say hey ron what's up what would you drink what are you drinking tonight and he would say tito's but uh he's not here so i'm just gonna say that for him so tonight i'm drinking uh maui brewings pineapple mana it's a wheat beer it's very tasty i'm i need a break from hops you know uh i like wine i like tequila i, I still love good beer um but good beer doesn't just mean death by ipa death by hops um so it's it's been so hot out here too you know and so i'm just i'm kicking it easy i also have a lager in the fridge right now from beechwood their hayabusa lager um this is better than that even though beechwood is a better brewery i think um uh but uh this pineapple mono wheat is just a very tasty delicious light beer five and a half percent so it's not nothing um but it's a it's a good way to go so let's dive into this. I even had structure tonight and everything. I haven't written an outline in a while, but whatever. It doesn't matter. We're here. Um, so tonight, instead of auction stuff, I'm kicking it off with some new car news because I'm sure you're aware there's been plenty of new car news. And the most recent of which was just the other day Jeep announced how much electricity they're adding to their lineup. And I think it's pretty amazing. And it actually sounds kind of fun. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, Jeep showed off four new vehicles, um, one of which is a plug-in hybrid, and then the other three are all electric, battery electrics, and then apparently there's a fourth full battery electric that has yet to be announced. But I'm going to start off with the hybrid. Um, so Jeep is basically applying the 4xe plug-in hybrid formula to the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. It only makes sense. Um, of the Grand Cherokees, I think the 4xe powertrain is the best one you can buy right now. I've been really impressed with it. When I went on the first um, the first drive event of that one, which I believe was in Texas, and uh, I was really impressed because it was still very much a Jeep, very capable, um, and just cruising around silently when you could was great. Still had plenty of power. Uh, I think it's quicker than just the five seven. If I remember my notes and all, all the stuff I learned, um, there's a Trailhawk version. There's a Summit Reserve Super Luxury version. So now you will just apply that, upsize it to the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, and you have an even more luxurious plug-in hybrid. Hopefully, it can still hit like 25 miles of range, but we'll see on that. Um, the other Wagoneer specific very interesting thing was a vehicle called the Wagoneer S. So this is a fully electric Wagoneer with some design language taken somewhere between the Grand Cherokee and the Wagoneer. Um, I think it looks really cool. It almost looks like if you know how you have the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport. If you have the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, you can consider those like the Range Rover. The Wagoneer S looks like a Range Rover Sport, but it's full electric. Um, they're saying it's going to have 400 miles of range. It's going to have like 600 horsepower, zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. So it's like a luxurious track hawk uh, that's just should drive really nicely. I'm really curious to learn more about that thing because uh, the top spec Jeep stuff right now on the inside is is probably a class above just premium. It's it's really really nice stuff with the Macintosh sound systems and the available trim and all that stuff. The top spec stuff right now from jeep is is fantastic um like luxury vehicle good um now there's another vehicle they showed off called the avenger it's the 2023 jeep avenger it's another full electric and this one is interesting i think it looks cool but it's smaller than the renegade and it is europe only it'll be the first fully electric jeep and it's a european product uh we're not getting it at least not initially um, I don't, there's probably not a market for a here for a sub renegade sized vehicle. So I get why they wouldn't do that. Uh, but it, I, I think it looks pretty cool for what it is. Now, one that we are getting that actually looks pretty fun is called the recon. Um, this is, it's, it's not a Wrangler. 
It is not an electric Wrangler, but it can do some Jeep Wrangler stuff. You can take the doors off. You can take the roof off. It's going to have e-lockers front and rear on the axles. Um, so it should be a trail rated, I think, a trail rated um, true Jeep that, that can go places and, and, and do fun stuff. Um, that one I'm even I'm, I'm extremely curious about what they're doing for powertrains, range, horsepower, all that stuff, because uh, it could be really, really cool. Um, that could be a, like a true, like I know Rivian is really the first electric adventure vehicle, uh, but a Jeep Recon with all of Jeep's off-road knowledge could go a long way with an, a, a full electric vehicle. So I, I'm really excited to see a production version, which we'll see next year of the Recon and the Wagoneer, I believe. We'll see a production versions next year. And then there, both the Recon and the Wagoneer S will actually be 2024 model vehicles that'll go into production in 2023 so we still have a lot to learn about those um, but it's pretty neat to see jeep embracing more of its electric side um, now i would love the magneto concept to come to be maybe that's the unnamed one that hasn't come out yet uh the magneto is a full electric wrangler that's a it's just a concept that they've shown at easter jeep safari that looks pretty cool um, but but they have to start electrifying because their plan for it is pretty ambitious in Europe, they want to have a 100% electric lineup by 2030, which is not that far away. And then in the U.S., they want their sales to be 50% full electric in the U.S. by 2030, which is also ambitious. But, they, you know, they have time for that one. But a vehicle like the Recon could help get them there. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Maybe that'll be their volume electric vehicle, which would be interesting. Or they'll apply what they learned with the Avenger to a larger vehicle that maybe would sell a little bit better here in the States. I'm not 100% on that, but that could be the plan there. Uh, switching it up to not electric, the 7th Gen Mustang is getting ready to make its public debut on September 14th. So today, the day I'm recording this is Thursday, September 8th. Um, I am very curious what we're going to see here. I think initially we're not going to see anything drastic. There's going to be some reworking to the styling of it, not in a dramatic way, but just like updating front and rear, uh, updating the interior. They're probably going to go with their big vertical screen on like higher spec models because uh, they really like that. And they, then it creates another connection to the Mach-E as well. Um, there's gonna, probably going to be a Turbo 6 and then, or Turbo 6 or Turbo 4. Um, and then there's going to be a 5.0. And then from there, we'll probably get our onslaught of, you know, the special editions, Mach 1s, GT350s, GT500s. You know they're going to do some final hurrah GT500. Uh, a lot of people are saying this could be the last V8 Mustang ever, this 7th Gen Mustang. Um, and it's possible. I've actually had people with the means to do so ask. They're like, hey, should I buy one of these and save it? And I, I never want to tell anybody to just sock a vehicle away. But, if I mean, from a pure investment standpoint might not be a bad idea um, if you have the money and ability to buy a car as an investment piece, like to just like take care of it, sock it away and not drive it. I don't think you should do that um, because I like, I think cars should be driven. However, from an actual financial investment point of view, it could be a potentially really good idea. So um, I, I do think there's a, a strong chance this is the last V8 Mustang ever. That's why I think they're going to do like Dodge is already saying, you know, Challenger and Charger, this is it. This is the last call, as they're saying for it. Um, and I, I, I don't see why Ford wouldn't follow suit, especially when they're leaning heavily on electrified stuff. Um, apparently, they're not going to do a hybrid for this generation of Mustang, which I thought they might do to try to, like, bridge the gap a little bit. Um, but I definitely think there'll be some cool swan song stuff, so to speak. And then... Um, and then it'll, it'll be interesting to see what, what the eighth generation Mustang has. Because I, I wonder if they won't just go full electric because um, you have the Mach-E. I wonder if they'll do like the top spec one will be some sort of like V6, turbo V6 hybrid. And then there'll be a turbo four. Like, you know, like the, the turbo V6 hybrid would replace the five liter um, just in terms of the, the lineup, not in terms of the experience. Uh, but whatever, yeah, I, whatever, that's, that's a ways away. We're, st we're still waiting to find out what the seventh gen is. So like, we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves here. Um, but speaking of Ford product, 
the last two days, I've been driving the Bronco Raptor around. Now, this isn't uh, for Hooniverse. I was helping Kelly Blue Book, my colleagues at Kelly Blue Book, shoot a video on it out in the desert the other day. So I picked it up. Um, then uh, my friend and colleague Lynn Woodward drove it out to the desert. She dropped off her long-term Pathfinder. She has one of the, I think it's called the Rock Creek. It's like their off-roady sort of edition. It had good tires on it. Um, I drove that out somewhere out near Barstow. There's a great off-road area. If you if you Google California 300, it gives you a pin at the end of Outlet Center Drive, and then it's basically like a wide-open playground. You just got to be careful because sometimes people are out there testing their race vehicles. So just, ha- you know, be aware. But there's some really cool, fun stuff to do in off-road vehicles. It doesn't cost any money. It's just you just pull off the road and you go. Uh, while we were there, a dude and uh, someone was testing a 6100-class truck, which is um, – one down from trophy trucks basically it's a spec trophy truck um they instead of like they i think they so they have ls3s but i think it's all spec ls3 engines but they have you know 40 inch tires 20 plus inches of wheel travel they're pretty monstrous machines and whoever this was testing they put it on the roof but they were able to get it they were fine they put on the trailer and they got out of there but that was interesting to say the least as we're shooting the bronco raptor but i drove it home i got to drive it a little bit in the dirt it's still outside right now. I'm returning it to the office tomorrow to hop back in my Montero. But I, oddly enough, I get a Bronco Raptor next week for Hooniverse, um, which I'm very excited about because I got to tell you, this thing rips. Um, it it hauls ass. It is hilarious off-road. On-road, it's hilarious with all like the uh, – if you leave it in Baja mode, the amount of movement you get out of the suspension. Like I love under hard braking how much nose dive there is. Um you know, these are things in a, in a car that you wouldn't want, but in a truck like this, you almost really you have fun with them. It's it's hilarious how much fun you have in this thing. Um, you can just point it at anything and go. Obviously, you always want to be careful what you're where you're pointing your tires off road, but <laughs> maybe you don't have to pay as close attention when you have this much ground clearance, suspension, and then a 37 inch tire. It's it is wild that this is a production vehicle with a 37 inch tire. Three takeaways from two days with the vehicle. The I everybody immediately hated the fender flares, and I was like, "Nah, they're not that bad." In person, I don't like them. Um, I think they kind of look like shit. And I'd be really curious if I were ever going to buy one of these. I would I would wrap them in the body color. I would do a wrap because if you're banging them up and scratch them up, wraps not as big a deal as paint. I'd be really curious to see how one would look with a body color wrap on them because obviously the it's not going to have the same look as the the body, the metal. Um, but I'd be really curious to see how it does look. It could look really cool. It could look like crap. I don't know, but I'd really like to see it. Um, I photoshopped one where, with body color fenders, and I think it looked cool in Photoshop. But that's not taking into account um, material reflectiveness and how it's going to handle the colors. So, you know, as as the fender the plastic fenders would they're pretty beefy fenders though i thought they're you know they're not flimsy or anything but still i I, they just look goofy um it's like from the factory they're like we're gonna put 35s on this and then they're like no push the track out 37s and then the the body designers are like all right well i guess we're gonna slap these goofy fucking fenders on there um the second thing i don't like is i I don't hate the 10-speed automatic but there are times where it's just like Mm, it it just it's one of those transmissions where it can be good but most of the time it's better to just use the paddles and shift it yourself and then like what's the point like if it, I, I these days automatics are so good you shouldn't have to do that um and in this this car i feel like i i'm enjoying it more if i am doing that um so it's it's a much smaller knock compared to the fenders and then the third knock is that uh, i can't afford one because this thing is that much fun the it 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 rips so hard like even just on the highway coming back from the desert i was hauling ass like passing everybody in the left lane flying in this bronco raptor and i never felt out of sorts i mean there's a sport mode for the street then you know baja there's a bunch of off-road modes there's um disconnecting sway bars lockers you know like everything you would need it's a cheat code for off-roading um it's it's such a monstrous vehicle for what it for for a bronco i think it's nine inches wider than the stock the regular bronco i put a picture up on my instagram parked nose to nose with my montero and it's hilariously taller like the hood is so much higher than my montero hood um 
but I got to tell you, it kicks ass, and I can't wait to spend more time with one next week. And the one I get next week is the green one, which is the good color on these. Um, but I don't get to spend the full week with it because I actually have to fly out Thursday night uh, for good reason, though. But I always hate when uh, my time with the Beagle gets cut short because of travel, especially when it's like something I've been really looking forward to. But I am flying back east to um, to do uh, another round of the Land Rover off-road competition. So the first time around, a few months ago or a year ago, shit, I don't even remember. You know, time has no meaning anymore. Um, I did the Land Rover Defender Trek competition, and my team won. Me, Tommy Micah from TFL, and Brian Dorr from Explore Elements. I mean, we kicked ass. We destroyed. We destroyed them. It was awesome. They invited us to um, defend our title with a – there's a 2022 – trek challenge i think this is the so there's a customer challenge and then there's a um a dealer challenge and i don't know if this is another example of the dealer challenge or if this is the customer challenge or if again we're just on another media wave which is more likely what it's going to be i i I don't know um it'd be fun if we were competing in the actual competition against because when we won, we didn't get to keep the trophy because they had to use the trophy for the, the dealers who were flying into town to compete. And um, they, they gave me that Lego Defender, which is back there somewhere. I don't know if you can see through the Jag or not. Or if, it's whatever. It's back there. I put it together. It's cool. You know, working differentials and uh, all that shit. Um, really very my first Lego Technics experience. But we're going back this time. Instead of being in Asheville, North Carolina, the, this event is in uh, Vermont at the, their Land Rover driving experience in Vermont. So it'll be it'll be cool to do it again. I had to look up and remember and study how to use a compass again because I forgot. Um, you know, put the, the the dog in the house or the the something in the shed, whatever. Uh, but red in the shed. That's what it is. Uh, if, for those of you who know navigating with compasses and orienteering and all that stuff, so I have to remember how to do that. And then there's there's way less information this time around than they gave us on the last one. So I'm very I like I'm going in much more. I've done it once, but I feel way more blind because the first time I was like studying stuff, and this time I'm like, ah, eh, we'll be fine. So it, it, we might do terrible this time. But Tommy and Brian will pick up all the slack for for me. Um, so there's that. I have a. A note over here to get some updates for Ron on the shitbox speakeasy, but I will update. I'll update for you. Um, it's still too hot in California. We're gonna get a break towards the end of this week, finally on the heat. And the crazy part is, we might get a hurricane out here, or at least down in the San Diego area. Um, which we don't get hurricanes on this side of the country. Uh, so. Um, there's one that's coming up, I think, through the Gulf of Mexico, but it's going to cross the Mexican Peninsula, or part of the, not Baja, but it's going to cross Mexico and touch San Diego, I think. And it, it's going it, to, they said it could potentially dump a year's worth of rain, which in California is like this much, or, you know, a few drops. Um, so that'll be interesting uh, to go from hot, like four fires somewhere around me to potential <laughs> raining hurricane-ness, um, which is a bummer because it'd be great to take my Montero and get it absolutely muddy, filthy. Now, speaking of, this is a good transition for my fleet stuff. Um, the Montero on Monday is getting dropped off to have the roof rack adjusted so I can finally put the tent on. I'm very excited about that. It was supposed to be this week, but the shop uh, forgot they, they were a little bit busy on the day I was supposed to go, so they asked me to move it back. Yeah, sure. Um, Chopping up the roof rack a little bit up top to fit that, and I'm very excited. Uh, I want to. I'd like to get a, a camping trip in just to test it myself, and then my family and I we're gonna go use it. Um, when are we using it? In like a month. We're gonna go camping in Santa Barbara month or month or two. I forget. Um, I'd like to take it and uh, put it to good use before they use it, just so I know exactly how to um, use it correctly, so that. When they're using it, there's no issues, and they're like, yep, yeah, okay, cool, we're comfortable. And then I'll sleep on the ground or whatever. Uh, let my wife and daughter use it and be happy. Um, so that's where the Montero is. And um, so we're doing that. Oh, and then the Old Man Emu Springs are also going in the same day. The rack's getting adjusted. I'm very excited to to fix that sagging rear 
and get the ride height proper and just have it be able to handle more weight in the back. Um, Old Man Emu medium duty springs. The, I think the springs that are in there, if they're original, that's amazing. Um, but you can tell that the truck sits. It, it doesn't have a Carolina squat, but it, it's it's definitely hanging down in the back. Uh, it's got droop ass. And we're fixing that. The springs are they're already here. They're sitting. They're waiting to go. We're good to go there. On the Jag, this car is running well right now. Um, it's the engine cooling is working. The air conditioning is working. So it's, it's working and I've been driving it a little bit and I've been enjoying it. Um, the only thing is, I, I, I don't know if it just is as simple as the belts need to be slightly tightened. I don't think it's that cause I'm not getting squealing or anything like that, but, uh, they could be a little tighter. Um, but I also got to figure out like it's such at idle. If I don't have my foot on the throttle a little bit, um, the, the volts just start to dip, start to dip, start to dip. And that's where I got into trouble initially when, once the AC got working again is something got so low because when volts go low, I think amps spike is what, is that what it is? Um, uh, whatever it was, like the volts got so low that when the cooling fans tried to kick on, they were like, and it blew a fuse. That's why the cooling fans stopped. Um, so they've, they've added like a separate fuse to that to help protect that if the volts drop, but I wish I could fix them. The problem, like this is such an, this should have no problem just sitting there and idle and just fucking keep, just the volts should be fine. Um, you know, it's not like we're, this is such a strain on this engine, but it's, I'm not running some, I'm not running some crazy sound system. You know, I'm not doing a bunch of dumb stuff. So I, I gotta look into see if there's a, an, a like a known issue with 350i TPIs just not um, handling their volts as well as they should. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But it is running well. I haven't listed it for sale or anything yet because I've been too lazy to. Um, and I am genuinely curious. I'm almost, I am tempted to wait until it's the registration's due. So, because it's going to need to be smog this time just to see what they say. Um, if I pull in, I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, and, I, and I get it smogged. Guy looks at the sticker runs it, hooks it up and it passes. I'll be like, I, I, I will wash it, take awesome photographs of it and lift it, list this shit for sale. Like that afternoon. Um, not that I don't like the car. I just haven't bonded to it. And I, I, I kind of got sold a car that was not presented honestly. Um, all the things, you know, I've had to fix and, and, and I just don't feel like fucking dealing with it i'd rather just focus on the montero press on the shop to just really start getting the bends going um they they were looking at it the other day um and i don't i don't know if i've said this in the podcast but there is an engine um we have an engine that's waiting to go in it um i don't think i've said this uh but but yeah like i'm not waiting on an engine we have an engine we're waiting for time in the shop but they've been looking at things and eyeballing some stuff so like it's not it's not just it's not just not happening it's just very slowly happening but there's an engine um and i know what engine it is and it's 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 gonna go in so stand by on that um so that's where we're at on those but um let's see i'm gonna jump over and pull up the instagram questions we got some instagram questions tonight let's get those going i'm pulling them up sorry for those of you who are listening and not watching you can't see me doing that um dangerous m3 when is it time to call it quits on a project car i hope this is not you calling it quits on your own m3 keep it going um and i literally just told you about my mercedes which i've had for i mean what is it nine years now i don't even know um it's, that's insane um it, I mean, unless if you're, if you're emotionally attached to a project, I don't know when you call it quits. If you're not and you're over it, then just fucking, you know, cut your losses. Like the Jack, I, I, I'm good. I'm going to move on. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I might be sad to see these BBSs walk out of the, the, here. Um, and I could put the other wheels back on, uh, get, you know, those boomer bait Chrome wheels. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I, I think it, it's, maybe emotionally attached is the wrong time. I, I mean, if it's just, if it's, if nothing's 
ever going right, maybe it's time to cut bait on it and start over fresh and healthy. I mean, you can always find something else that could, could capture your attention. So, uh, I don't know. T tougher question to answer than initially thought. Pretty cool project. Next five mods for the mall crawler. Um, so the, the, the tent, the springs, uh, I just ordered one of those ox beam switch panels and I'm going to actually, um, this, I'm holding it up for those of you listening, not watching. This is the original um, uh, piece that sits under the radio radio in my Montero. Um, and so I pulled it because I have a 3D printed one in there right now. But this one actually fits better than the 3D printed one. So what I'm going to do is um, right here in the opening, I'm going to fit the... I think I ordered the eight or the six. I ordered one of those ox beam switch panels. And the reason I'm ordering that is because I'm, I'm going to get my light bar switch on that. I'm going to get, um, what the hell else was I going to add on that? Oh, I want to add e lockers. So I'm going to need a front switch and a rear switch for that. Um, I'd like to get a rear chase light. Uh, I really like the Baja designs ones, but I've heard they're not the best company. Um, so, um, I, Casey highlights makes one and Casey's fantastic, or at least it's been around forever. So I want to get a chase bar. Like you see on off-road vehicles, I want to have it set inside the rear glass. So, and, and it's, it'll be a proper one where I'd like to have it so I can turn it on and off or like I'll use it off road. I don't really need it on road, but it'd be cool to have it kind of hidden and they make one that has like, um, for a couple different reasons, but also has integrated turn signals. So you'd have your turn signals up high like that. Uh, go, go Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about, but the Casey highlights chase light might look pretty cool, uh, behind the glass. So I'd run that. Um, and then I'm trying so there was that, those two. I thought there was something else that I wanted to run off the switch panel. This is probably this is why I only needed the six though, because I, I don't I'm not running like whips and and uh, all this other crap. But if I ever needed to add um, some other power that I could kill from there, or if I put some other lights, which I don't really need, but but that's the plan right now. It's it'll be um, the mods will be eventually the mods will be front and rear uh, e lockers after we do the springs and then this, but the e-lockers are going to be wait a little bit because they're, they're expensive. It's like to buy the pair is like 1500 and that doesn't count obviously installation. Um, so we'll see on that. Um, but that's where I'm at on that. I can't think of what other mods I want to do at the moment. That's, I mean, that's plenty of mods. Uh, Courtney D. Leonard asks, how's Ron's jet boat goals coming along? I can't answer that. Maybe we'll save that one. Dissident Smithing asks, thinks the pulse, Think the Polestar 6 will make it to market? Will it even matter in 2026? 2026 isn't that far away. And I think it's such a good design with insane horsepower um, that, yes, I think I think it'll make it to market because it's a real car company. Um, and they don't just do willy-nilly shit like Tesla. Um, I think it looks cool. Like I said, the power numbers are sick. And the deposits weren't just like $100 deposits. These were like $25,000 deposits. These were real deposits. They're only making 500 of this first limited edition one of a $250,000 car, I think it is. But it's like eight, so like somewhere between eight and 900 horsepower. Um, so if you don't know the Polestar 6, it's based on their O2 concept. It's an electric roadster. You should go Google it because it, it, it looks pretty dope. Um, and I do think it is going to come to market. And I do think it will matter in 2026. I, I, I think so. Um, Clorox man, you must choose a or B the chargers, EV frat sonic exhaust or B engine Vox's Ferrari F8 exhaust. I don't know that Ferrari F8 exhaust. Um, I'm, I don't know the Ferrari exhaust, but I don't love Ferrari as a company. So I'm just going to choose the charger just because. And I really, really, really want to know how the Fredzonic exhaust actually works. I want to know what the hell is going on. Taylor356, advice on how to buy a dog out of state and not get scammed or support puppy mills. So question for you, why do you need to buy out of state? Um, I mean, my thing is... Um, is to adopt, not shop. I'm pretty big on that. I don't, there are puppies through rescue organizations. Like if you really want a puppy, you don't have to buy there. There are puppies in rescue situations all, all the time. Um, and there's probably some great rescues near you. Uh, and now the problem is you may be looking for a very specific breed and that's when it gets tougher. And if you have a very specific breed in mind, you got, if you really want that type of dog, 
that's a tougher conversation because a lot of times you're not going to find one of those in a rescue. Um, there's a type of breed of dog I like called an Italian Spinoni. Uh, and if you like, it's, it's such a specific breed that, you know, someone wants it, they're probably not going to give it up to a rescue. That's not to say it's not impossible. You can find all sorts of breeds in rescues, but if there's something specific, I also like Irish wolfhounds and not that we're in the market in the market. We're not getting an Irish wolfhound anytime soon. I, it would be so hard to have a dog that like lives for like seven years. Um, but I would love an Irish wolfhound. Um, the, so my first p bit of advice is, is try to find one local, um, and try to find it through a rescue. Um, otherwise the conversation gets very difficult. Um, in, again, if you're going for a very specific breed, there should be like at least forums and reviews on certain breeders. If you're, if you are going that route, that should help you a lot. So maybe start looking into like forums of that breed and asking some questions if people know this breeder. Um, but I go back to, if you can find it via a rescue, find it via a rescue. Um, we just found our 10th foster dog, a forever home. So, I mean, you know where, where my heart lies, uh, CNC picks. What's it gonna What's it gonna take for either of you to start driving an EV? My wife My wife actually said she wants her next car to be an EV, and I didn't want to push it on her. I would like her next car to be an EV. Well, I will still have gas vehicles. Um, I w I want her next one to be an EV. Um, I'd really love her to get an EV6. I, I think the Kia EV6 kicks ass, and I I would like one. Um, they're they're still a little expensive, but. Um, you know, um, we have, we could level two charge at home. It would be, she would then gain, she knows this too. She would gain the garage spot because she would need to charge it and I would lose. But it, I, 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 that part's tough. I'm not gonna lie that part's tough because I like parking in here, but I think it'd be, I think our, our next new car that we buy, um, or lightly used, whatever will be an electric one for her. Um, my cars are still going to be drinking gas for a while, um, forever. Actually, uh, I doesn't mean I won't have an EV of my own someday, but um, I will always have something that burns gas. I'm pretty darn confident in that. Uh, the reels man, the I always say this: the real S man GS. Is that what it is? How do you feel about the queen dying? I am impressed that she lived this long and ruled this long, but I'm pretty indifferent at the same time. I'm not a big royalist. Um, you know, there's, there's issues with the monarchy. Um, uh, but I, I'm not, I wouldn't, I don't, she didn't seem like a bad person that I'm aware of though, though, you know, I, I, now that we're getting deeper into this, I mean, they seems like they treated Meghan Markle pretty shitty. Um, and that's fucked up, but I, I don't have a strong opinion on her dying. I gotta be honest. Um, she had a hell of a run. <laughs> There's that. I think a good portion of the British population is into the Royal family. I think, I mean, it's their queen. Um, yeah, I don't, I am not a big Royal. I don't care about the Royal family. Yeah. That's, that's where that is. Harry seems cool. I don't know. Um, and then that dude, Pasha, did you know, Peter from YouTube's legit street cars has a two door Raider? Um, there are only two door Raiders, FYI. Um, they don't make a four door Raider. Um, but I don't know who Peter is and I don't know what legit street cars is. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, but now I want to check it out and learn more about his Raider. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, my friend Lynn Woodward has a two door Montero. That's not a Raider. Hers is an actual Montero. I forget what year they did the, what did they do the Raider in 89, but they started the Monteros and like the Tudor Monteros and did they go down to 84 or is it just 87? Um, I forget, but two door and four door Monteros, two door Dodge Raiders. I think the Gallopers, the Hyundai Gallopers, I think those might only be four doors. Um, and then is there one I'm for, forgetting? Pajeros, Monteros, obviously the same thing, but with different engines and some different body styles, like high roofs and shit like that. Um, the Raider, US Dodge Raider, two door only. 
And then the Galloper, the Hyundai Galloper, I think was four door only. I'm not 100% on that. Either way, I love them all. Um, there, there you go. That's the good stuff. Um, that's all I've got this week uh, because my man Ron is on a boat. So blame him. Um, no, I'm just kidding. It's, it's fine. This shit happens. Um, neither one of us is getting paid to do this. Uh, we just like doing it. Uh, I will have news for you next week because the roof rack and the tent should be ready to go on the Montero, uh, and the Springs. I'm very excited to, to have the Springs in there. Um, and then I'll be, Oh, I'll have the Bronco Raptor for a little bit longer time as well. So we'll, we'll have some good stuff to talk about. And then we'll be getting, I'll be getting ready for my Land Rover adventure. And then we can dive back into the shitbox speakeasy for some fresh updates and see what's going on in Ron's world. And that's it for now. Uh, I just want to say, follow me at Hooniverse Jeff. I'm working. I am finally working with Blipshift on some T-shirts. Uh, we're going to do an updated Hooniverse one, but also talking about Hooniverse podcast one. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, I don't know if you're still supposed to rate and review podcasts, but if you want to, please feel free uh, on whatever source you listen to this thing on and then uh otherwise i will see you wonderful people uh virtually next week have a good one thanks for listening thanks for watching oh,